Kelsey and you're watching episode 10 of DJP TV. We tie ourselves away from our consoles just long enough to make an episode and it's all for you. Here's what's coming up on this week's show. We show you how to be an aerial dog fighting pro and a guide to earning your wings in Jane's Advanced Strike Fighters. We take a look at some video game piracy. No, not that kind of piracy. We mean the kind seen in upcoming RPG Risen 2 and chat to the brand manager at Deep Silver about the game. Yarrr, Mimikti! Well, something like that anyway. And we get our best party clothes on as we join our favourite Nintendo characters in our Mario Party 9 review. But first up, let's see what tips Steve has to offer in his guide to earning your wings in Jane's Advanced Strike Fighters. Hi, and welcome to my guide to Jane's Advanced Strike Fighters that should hopefully see you all remaining airborne for that little bit longer. Each mission begins with a briefing. One important piece of information to pay attention to is the mission type and recommended plane at the top of the briefing window. This will help you select the best fighter for the job from the choice of over 30. For the mission we are taking on here, we need an aircraft that is suitable for attacking ground targets. However, we may encounter enemy fighters too, so a multi-role aircraft is recommended. You can get details on what weapons are equipped, the armour rating, agility, stealth and speed. The higher the stealth rating, the less heat and radar signature you leave and therefore harder for the enemy to target using ground defences such as every combat pilot's nemesis, the dreaded SAM. Once you have picked your bird of choice, most missions begin with you sitting on the runway. Hitting the right trigger increases your thrust till you reach the optimal speed and you can pull back on the left stick to take to the air. Proceed directly to Zalab province. Expect to encounter heavy air resistance. The left stick is used to roll and pitch your jet, while the bumper buttons your the aircraft to the left and right. The triggers adjust the thrust and the double tap on the right trigger will engage afterburners, giving you an increase in overall speed, which is great for getting you into combat situations quicker or even escaping them when things get too hot. The face buttons control the weapon and targeting systems of your fighter, and the D-pad cycles through your onboard armament selection, and is where you need to look to select the best weapon for the current target. Aircraft are also fitted with cannons, allowing you to pepper your target with gunfire when in close. Ideal for larger airborne and less manoeuvrable targets like this heavy transporter for example. It's important to mention here that Jane's doesn't use an arcade style control system seen in many console flight games. Turning isn't just a case of pressing left or right on the stick. Doing so will just roll your aircraft to the left or right, so rolling the aircraft slightly then pulling back on the left stick will turn you quicker. Lowering the thrust and reducing airspeed will cause your aircraft to turn in an even tighter arc. Using the bumper buttons you can yaw the aircraft and make slight adjustments to your current heading, ideal for when lining up a bombing run. Learning to use countermeasures correctly really will make a difference to staying in one piece. Once an enemy incoming missile begins to close in, turning the aircraft sharply and releasing a countermeasure at just the right moment is the best way to evade the threat. It might take a little practice to get it right, but keeping an eye on your heads up display and timing the release of a countermeasure will keep you alive a lot longer, even more so during the later missions. On this particular mission where our objective is to take out an enemy controlled power station, a number of SAM sites have been deployed. Identifying and taking these ground targets out first should be our number one priority. In most situations, the aircraft will be equipped with heavy bombs, air to air missiles and air to ground missiles. Taking out moving ground targets, the air to ground missiles is the best option for getting a quick kill. 
for buildings and structures, heavy bombs will be quicker and far more efficient. The drawback to using bombs is that you need to line up your target. Clicking down on the right stick will help with this and give you a better view of your bomb targeting reticule. Identifying all targets in a combat situation and prioritising the biggest threats first really can make a difference. This will also save valuable time flicking between your currently selected weapons, while attempting to dodge incoming threats. Well, that's it for my quick guide to Jane's Advanced Strike Fighters. Keep practising, stay frosty and above all else, be careful out there. And maybe one day, you can be my wingman. Strike Fighter is out next Friday, the 9th of March, and hopefully these tips will have you standing in the air a little bit more and looking for the eject seat button a little less. Now, hoist the Jolly Roger, grab a bottle of rum, and put a parrot on your shoulder as we check out Deep Silver's new RPG, Risen 2, which features pirates. Yarrr! Hi, I'm Pete Brawley, brand manager of Risen 2 Dark Waters for publisher Deep Silver. The story of Risen 2 continues on from Risen 1 where the player was tasked with taking down an enemy known as the Fire Titan on the island of Faranga. And we join uh, the hero, the nameless hero, uh, several years later and he's a bit disillusioned with the world, he's a bit, um, he's a bit of a drunk basically. Uh, he's been swigging rum for the last few years, you know, he, he didn't really get the credit that he deserved from, uh, from his uh, save in the island in the first game because the rest of the wo world had been ravished by these uh, Titans raising up from the, from the ground. So he's a... Uh, He's a hero who doesn't really want to be a hero and you know he's once again called upon in Risen 2 to, to, to help save the world and he's tasked with first of all infiltrating uh, the pirates because they're, they're known to have a weapon to fight against uh, some of these uh, creatures that are rising um, and you know that's where the player jumps in they're tasked with uh, infiltrating pirates and as the game progresses they're going to see more of the pirate life and uh, you know everything that that entails. We have two different factions uh, that the player can ally themselves with, which have a, a, a huge impact on the, on the progression of the character th uh, themselves. So if they side with the Inquisition, they can earn the right to, to be trained in how to use firearms such as rifles, muskets, shotguns and pistols. Um, although if they, um, if they side with the, the natives, they will be shunned uh, if they are if they're already learned uh, how to use uh, firearms. The natives call them thunder sticks, and they won't show you how to uh, use voodoo. So there's definitely a choice there. The natives will uh, allow you to to learn voodoo if you side with them, and and with that you can actually manipulate NPCs, uh, and you can make voodoo potions, uh, voodoo puppets to to hurt enemies and take control of them, and voodoo scepters where you can summon a a ghost to fight with you, or you can scare enemies away, or you can actually force two enemies to start each uh, to fight each other particular favorite of mine, get two gorillas to fight each other. Oh my god, does it look epic. You can just sit and watch. Whoa. And then throw a pirate in in the middle and then it's flying around. You know, you can cause havoc with the wildlife and the NPCs with voodoo. <laughs> So choices in Risen 2 directly feed into how your, your character progresses. So there's lots of NPCs in the world and they're the guys that will actually uh, teach you different skills, different perks uh, um, in different areas. So you might get a blades teacher who'll teach you how to, to use a, a saber or a rapier. Um, but they also teach you how to like smith, how to like forge weapons, and so depending on uh, the NPCs you talk to and the choices you've made uh, with which faction you, you ally with, for example, you can um, with, if you ally with the, the Voodoo natives, you're locking yourself out of uh, um, any uh, gun or firearms related uh, skills. But more than that actual NPCs as well have their own uh, agenda so when you talk to a trainer sometimes you have to do things for them or you know you maybe uh, piss them off earlier so they're not going to want to show you some uh, some skills so very much uh, it's a case of choosing which NPCs you want to talk to which kind of character you want to be um, it really actually uh, it comes through through interaction with the with the with the people and 
There's a lot of uh, multiple solutions to, to quests in Risen as well. One example um, is there's a, there's a ship that needs to be taken over. There's a ton of enemies on there. If you're a skilled character, if you're a, a, a skilled in blades and firearms, it might, uh, might actually be easier for you. But if you're uh, specializing in voodoo, for example, or more of a sneaky character, you can actually uh, take control of the commander of these guys, send him down to the ship and dismiss the troops. So there's lots of different choices this way. Um, the game likes to hint at the different choices, but there are some that are out there as well that you you can just find by exp exploring yourself. You know, there's uh, there's always uh, there's always uh, multiple options, and you know that we like to encourage players to explore and uh, you know manipulate the world. You think that'll help you? Bara! Look upon the warriors I am making for you. What pirate game would be complete without uh, your, your very own uh, parrot and, and monkey? And there's lots of piratical uh, themed, uh, pirate themed uh, uh, helpers there, let's say. So the dirty tricks play an important part in Risen where you can uh, mix up your, your attacks. Uh, you could throw a coconut <laughs> at an enemy and knock him out. Um, you can use the pirate to distract. Um, yeah, and the monkey is an example um, of the cunning skill. So that's the thievery st uh, style skill, the sneaking um, style, where you can um, choose to have a, be a trainer and a monkey. So you can send him out to um, to loot different areas. You can send him into people's houses at night, climb through windows, so just uh, load his, I guess, monkey pockets with loot. Come back to the player, and then the player will receive the loot as long as you know the monkey um, doesn't get killed in the process. If the monkey gets killed, you got to buy a new monkey. That's you know that's life. Risen 2 Dark Waters will be available on PC, Xbox 360 and PS3 on April 27th. Thanks to the guys at Deep Silver for inviting us along to check it out. We all love a good pirate. Or is it Ninja? I'm pretty sure it's Pirate. Anyway, here's Dan with his verge to Mario Party 9. With any game heading towards a double figures title, expectations are raised as the new title not only has to be a standalone gem, but also has to compete with the series best. Enter Mario Party 9, Nintendo's latest offering in their Party Game spin-off series featuring a colourful cast of the Super Mario universe. Once you're in and you've learned the ropes, you quickly discover that Mario Party 9 is going in a completely new direction. Rather than doing laps around a board until you reach a round limit, you now all operate a single vehicle and aim to reach a goal. At the goal, the player with the most mini stars is crowned the superstar. Whereas previous Mario Party titles saw you collecting coins, which could then be exchanged for stars, Mario Party 9 instead sees you collecting mini stars. These are awarded for winning mini-games, activating special bonuses or simply picking them up as you travel. Naturally, said travelling isn't just a case of going from A to B. In traditional Mario Party style, you roll your dice and hop from node to node, collect items, activate environmental interactions and battle bosses. Unlike other Mario Party titles, the items in question are all variants of the standard six-sided dice. You'll collect other dice which limit your choice of moves or expand them. For example, you might collect a 1-3 to three dice. When this is used, the maximum you can roll is a 3. Funny how that works. 0-1 to one and 4-6 to six dice operate in the same expected manner, and throw in a slow dice which lets you carefully pick the number from 1-6 to six, and a 1-10 to ten dice, and that's about as much variety as you get with items. So no mushrooms, pipes and whatever else we've seen in past titles. As for the actual stages, you can initially pick from five different areas, each with their own themes, and you can unlock a further two by playing solo or saving party points. Party points are rewarded for finishing games or venturing into the minigames menu. The minigames menu is surprisingly in-depth, allowing you to take part in a number of different overarching games which each contain regular minigames. Standing victorious in the minigames will let you advance in the main game until you're crowned the overall winner.
The minigames themselves are the typical eclectic Mario Party staples with Wii motion controls thrown in. Everything from opening locked chests, fishing for cheap cheeps, escaping a haunted mansion and many more are included. Most are simple free-for-all games where all four players duke it out, but there are 3v1 variants, battle games and more. If there is any real negative surrounding Mario Party 9, it's the linearity of the actual party game. Whereas previous titles could have custom lengths if you fancy something a bit longer, there's only ever one path to the goal. Even when the path does split, it still rejoins eventually. It's not a major negative by any means, but when you're supposedly playing something as open as Mario Party, being directed doesn't always feel right. Mario Party 9 is far from a bad game, but lacks that certain something to make it truly special. If you're looking for more of what has already been offered, you'll probably enjoy this, aside from the new linear progression system. It's fun with friends or alone, and with a slew of unlockables via the museum area, you can keep at it for a good while if you wish. Mario Party 9 said it looks like fun and games for all the family, and it's out today. And who can resist playing with Mario and Luigi and Peach and Toad? Anyway, sadly it's the end of our show. Don't forget to join us again next week when we have tips to stand alive in Ubisoft's I'm Alive and check out dailyjoypad.co.uk for all its news, reviews and previews. Thank you for watching. Bye.